We know you love healthcare triage, but you're also busy. We get it. You'd love to watch every single episode of the show, but maybe you miss some. That's okay. We're here to help. This episode is our gift to you. All the episodes of Healthcare Triage in one go. 2016 in review. That's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. We started the year off with an episode on biologics and biosimilars. It was wonky, but we knew you could take it. Then we talked about the USPSTF and the good work that it does. They're in the news again. You should check it out. It's important. Advanced life support isn't all it's cracked up to be. That's what the research says. So did our episode. Menu labeling isn't either. So much disappointment. On February 1st, we tackled Zika. It's still an issue. Next week, we did an episode on alcohol, showing that it isn't all bad. That doesn't mean abuse isn't a problem, but we should look at evidence, and we did. We continued doing so the following week when we reviewed the CDC's updated recommendations on pregnancy. They were somewhat of a mess. Doctors and depression was the next topic. It's of personal importance to me, and I hope you'll go watch that episode again. I took on breakfast the following week. It is not the most important meal of the day. Get over it. Home births can be safe. We showed you the evidence. Then we showed you how kids remain awesome, especially compared to us older people when we were kids. Go make your elders watch that one. The way we train residents can be brutal and have detrimental effects. You watched and discussed. The week after, we covered clickbait headlines and how they differ from the actual research they cover. We should do more of that, and I'll try harder in 2017. Antibiotic resistance is a huge problem. We talked about that in April. So was and is the water in Flint, Michigan. We talked about that and how bad lead is for kids' development that month, too. The Diabetes Prevention Program and its movement into the YMCA and new Medicare policy reimbursement for it are a huge deal in health services research. The researchers who did much of the work to get that done are colleagues and friends of mine from IU School of Medicine, and it was an honor to talk about them and the program. And then, thanks to generous support from the National Institute of Healthcare Management, we are very, very grateful to them. We kicked off a whole month on opioids. We started with the history of opioids, how they came to be, and how they've changed in form and use over time. Then we covered the science of opioids. Come for the information, stay for the amazing graphics. Third, we covered the opioid epidemic in America and how big a problem it is. And we finished up with opioid addiction and treatment. We're super proud of that series and we hope you are too. Peanut allergies are a problem. So are the way we're trying to prevent them. That was the topic on June 6th. That was followed by what might be our most controversial episode ever on circumcision. I tried to be fair, evidently that wasn't enough for many of you. After a tragedy in Orlando, we covered the blood donation policies there and how unevidence based they seem to be. Next week, we covered retail clinics and how they're convenient, reliable, and kind of affordable. For many things, they seem pretty great. Since the circumcision hate mail wasn't enough, we decided to do an update on e-cigarettes, kids, and vaping. Still evidence-based, go watch. Never one to pass up an instance to get upset when recommendations don't seem to line up with evidence. We railed on salt. They want you to eat almost none. We think the data might not support that. On the other hand, we love telemedicine. We did a whole episode on why. Off-label medications, the subject of the following week, are murkier. There's a lot you can do to prevent some cancers, and it does involve as many hard choices as you think. That was the topic of August 6th. Whether Alcoholics Anonymous works is another controversial topic, but good research techniques, like the use of instrumental variables, can inform that debate. We did. Go watch and learn. Infant mortality in the United States is surprisingly high. Why that is and what we might do about it was the subject of our next episode. Following that was an episode on how we could use a policy called reference pricing to start controlling drug prices in the United States. Lots of other countries do. EpiPens dominated the news in the beginning of September and we did our part to inform the discussion. We had episodes, news, and live shows, and we hope you saw them all. Lots of parents panic about getting their babies to sleep. We covered the evidence for you. Then we covered the evidence on bite wing x-rays and why you might not need them as often as your dentist says. We don't follow medical devices the way we do drugs to see if they're failing us. That's not good. We discussed why. Then we talked about preventable medical errors and why perhaps we're following them in the wrong way too. You may disagree. Go watch and let us know. Needle exchange programs are evidence-based and they improve outcomes. So is Medicaid. They both got covered by healthcare triage in October. Then we did an election-themed episode comparing and contrasting the healthcare reform plans of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. 
That seems so quaint now. Back to public policy. We covered Yelp patient reviews, how they might be relevant, and how we might better use patient satisfaction to reimburse physicians. Next week, we talked about SNAP, or food stamps, and how we might use carrots and sticks to improve the way the program influences obesity. The five second rule is still crap. Another study showed that to be the case and everyone freaked out again. We did an episode which asked, why? So much stuff is dirtier than the floor. You're always worried about the wrong things. Remember reference pricing? It's good for more than just drugs. We addressed its importance in health insurance as well. California's trying it, and it's working out pretty well. With the help of friend of the show, Austin Frack, we covered paid sick leave. It's a great idea. So of course, it's uncommon in the United States, unlike other countries. And we ended the year with healthcare. First, we talked about how access in the United States still falls far short of where we'd like it to be, even with the Affordable Care Act. Then we talked about whether there's a shortage of doctors in the United States. There are many good arguments for and against. What no one debates is that we have a shortage of doctor services. And that's 2016. But look, 2017 is going to be a whole different story. With the new administration coming into power and a full Republican Congress, it's likely that next year is going to be full of changes and surprises. We're going to be here to explain all of it to you. We hope you'll join us. Healthcare Triage is supported in part by viewers like you through Patreon.com, a voluntary subscription service that allows you to support the show through your monthly donation. We'd like to thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz and Karen Green, and our Surgeon Admiral, Sam. Thanks, Joe and Karen. Thanks, Sam. More information can be found at Patreon.com slash Healthcare Triage.